Oh. oh my god, I'm so happy to be done. Oh. I can't feel my foot. Jesus Christ. That is no joke. I don't really know how I did. Whew, that was neat. So you wanna know about the FKT? We gotta go back to the beginning. Uh, yeah, I guess like, my name is Reese Ruland. The coolest part about me is my dog. So like, if Kate Courtney is up here and like your aunt on Facebook is down here, my dog is somewhere here and I'm like in this region, like just above the ant. Uh, the White Rim Trail is a 100 mile route that starts in Canyonlands National Park and it goes down Horse Thief, um, to the canyon to where you get to green, the Green River, then you go over Hard Scrabble, you go up Murphy's Hogback, um, you basically turn a corner and then you're going along the Colorado River at that point. Um, you go a bunch, across a bunch of slick rock and then eventually to get out of the canyon you have to climb about a three-ish mile climb up Schaefer to the entrance of Canyonlands National Park um, and then you go down a road back to the beginning. Why am I doing this? You know, I did a whole movie on why I do these things and I still don't think I know the answer other than like, it's just, it makes me feel the most alive. And I think that that's maybe a thing that is, you know, it's not just individual to me. I think a lot of other people really need to use their bodies and like exert themselves um, to feel alive in some way. And I think that for me doing that um, sharing that experience with a friend and also being in like one of the most beautiful places. Like I can't really think of a better way to kind of spend my time. Yeah, problem solved. Can I still get Well, you've got two nozzles, right? So much hydration. I want to be out there alone and really have this be a personal experience, despite the fact that, you know, like, it's being shared with others. I want to have like my experience in the canyon for me because it's going to be so personal and so different than everyone else's. We aren't going to have any cameras. There's going to be no one um, helping me, self-supported. Um, it's just me in the elements by myself, experiencing it um, purely without, without pressure of anyone else, I guess, following me. Yeah, I just don't want to get frustrated because I think, like, part of the stupid thing about doing this alone is that I'm ruining, like, a very nice ride. <laughs> like, yeah. arguably one of the nicest rides in our country. I feel like I'll go way too slow this time because I won't know what I'm doing. And then I'll just be like, well, I've got to come back in the spring. Yeah. And then I'll have to come back. All right. Send portal. So at first there's like 13 miles of dirt road, which is pretty boring. Um, but eventually after the, the road, you, you get to the precipice of Horse Thief, which is your big descent into the canyon where you'll meet up with the Green River and the actual White Rim Trail. You turn, take a left at the bottom. And I got to the top of that and you just see everything all at once. And it was so breathtaking. I almost like locked up my brakes around the first corner because I was just like, I want to stop and look at this. Um, it was so amazing. It was so dusty and so deep and sandy that I like went super slow. And at that point I was like, ah, eh, I'm out of the running. I should probably just take it easy from now on. Uh, so I didn't look at my computer. After that, I decided that it just wasn't worth it, that I was so far behind, I better just enjoy this area. I knew hard scrabble was coming up and there was actually a sign. I knew that there was sand that was so deep that I would need to walk up it. And sure enough, there was, it was like eight to 10 inches deep and your foot was just plunging in the sand and my f shoes were just filled with sand. 
So I definitely have some superstitious things that I always want or like have like a weird relationship with in some way where um, they're just special. Uh, one of them is actually this little bracelet, which I don't think you can even see. But I have a necklace with me. It's this black stone that I got from some random fortune teller, aura reader, psychic who read like the, my cards. And it was supposed to be a, like a protecting stone for strength. And I was like, oh, that's hocus pocus, but I'm gonna use it. <laughs> I didn't really know. I, I had assumed Mercury's Hogback was something that was like immediate and just like super hard all at once. But I think it was more like three individual climbs that were kind of drawn out. And I was like, is this it? Cause that wasn't that hard. I, I was told it would be harder. And the second one, I was like, is this it? I was like, cause that was hard. And the descent was kind of gnarly. And then, and then I got to it and I was like, oh, okay, understood. This is bad. And it was so steep. I got off and just like pushed my bike. And around 60 miles, I was like, yeah, like I'm feeling good. This is great. Like this is where I start to feel good. And 10 miles later, I noticed that my right foot was numb. And I was like, oh, that doesn't feel right. Like, not into that. And then it was like shooting pain up my right leg. And I was like stretching over the slick rock. And I was like, should I stop and get someone to adjust my sat? Like, what am I doing? <laughs> this is dumb. I'm like permanent nerve damage. I don't know. But I'm like, whatever, ignore your problems. It's 2020, like <laughs> ignore all the things. Uh, you'll get through this. You've got 30 miles left doing, putting myself in a situation where I have to go beyond maybe my normal, you know, comfort level and being complacent with myself. Cause you know, like, I don't know, we all are just such suckers for comfort a lot of times that it's almost like a deadening feeling and that pushing yourself, challenging yourself makes you feel the most alive. I think, you know, find your way of whatever that is, like figure out what makes you feel great and go and do that. And I finally round this corner and I see Schaefer and out of nowhere, like word vomit, I start singing like John Denver. And I'm like, country roads, take me home. We're going up at like 21% and then out of nowhere, just like voom, just comes down. And I thought I was lost and I'd missed a turn. And I was like, oh my God, I'm on the wrong road. I just spaced out for the last 30 minutes. And I, did, I was like, whatever, I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> I didn't see a turn. So I keep going. I eventually see the road, the paved road. And I was like, my God. And I remember as I'm on the road, George had said on the right, you'll see a, a turn for Dead Horse Point or something like that. He's like, from that moment on, You'll spin out, it's all downhill, and you make your left and you're done. And I saw that, and like, even right now, I get chills thinking about it. I was like, oh my God, I am so happy. I can coast, like, I can coast. I mean, it was painful, because I was stepping on my foot, and like, that was radiating pain, but I was like, I welled up, because I was so happy. And I like, finally, around that stupid corner, and I get done, and I'm just like, oh my God. Oh, am I happy to see you. Oh my God. Me. Jesus. <laughs> oh. oh my god, I'm so happy to be done. Oh, oh my god. Oh fuck. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> That was hard. I can't feel so my foot. I didn't upload my ride. I had no idea. I'm just like not someone that believes anything until there's like physical, actual proof, science, I don't know. And uh, so three hours after I actually finished, we drove to the Moab airport and uploaded when I had service. Send portal. I was on Samantha. Description. Life, <laughs> life, the universe, and everything. Let's 
see what happens. thing that always kind of bothers me about when endurance or FKTs is when people either think that it is, you should only be doing something because it's fun all the time and it doesn't matter and like don't care about anything when you clearly train really hard and you really care about something and then I also don't understand the train of thought of people that say that there's the beginning, the end, and the struggle in between because um, I think really in reality what it is is there's the beginning, the end, and literally everything in between. There's moments of pure joy, of feeling incredible, being awestruck, also despair, uh, hating it, wanting to stop, being super proud of yourself, being psyched. Uh, in the end, you're super excited, and then eventually you slip into a sadness when it's all over, uh, and then you just figure out what <laughs> what to do next. I feel so good. That's the cherry on top. Like, I was so happy before, but now I'm like, what, 11 <laughs> minutes? That's nuts. Yes. That's insane. Wow. I can't wait for someone else to go and absolutely destroy it because now, like, I know how hard it was. Mm -hmm. So for someone else to go and, like, throw down, I'd be yeah. like, damn. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was... It was a fun time. I'll leave a Yelp review. <laughs> yes. Five stars. <laughs> Let's come back. Oh. Trip advisor. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a really great day ride. <laughs>